Today I'm joined by three of Ontario's local distribution company CEOs, Hydro One's Carm Marcello, Toronto Hydro's Anthony Haynes, and PowerStream's Brian Bentz. My remarks are about two, uh, two and a half minutes. In a moment I'll turn it over to them to provide some equally brief comments about their experience with smart meters in their service territory. Then we'll be pleased to take your questions. While confident that the auditor and her team undertook this work and assessment with best intentions, unfortunately the Minister, Ministry of Energy finds it difficult to accept some of the report's conclusions and omissions. The Ministry does not accept that, quote, many of the anticipated benefits of smart meters have not been achieved, nor the Auditor uh, General, uh, General's opinion that, quote, its implementation has been much more costly than projected. This audit's tally is made up mostly of estimated costs that have not yet been submitted to the Ontario Energy Board for rec regulatory review and approval. And even then, the OEB has been taking a strong line to ensure value to the ratepayer and appropriate cost allocation. To that end, it remains likely that some significant charges will not be passed on to ratepayers after the Ontario Energy Board has an opportunity <coughs> to review the appropriate regulatory submissions. Smart meters are delivering value and benefits for ratepayers in a wide range of ways. The 4.8 million smart meters in place now provide environmental and system benefits, reduce system costs over the long term, and incent consumers to shift their consumption away from times when electricity is most costly to produce and deliver. Approximately 1.5 million households have changed their consumption voluntarily as a result of time of use pricing, and the Auditor General confirms this. This is an extremely significant transitional number for new technology. In 2013, the Ontario Energy Board commissioned a paper by the expert energy research group Navigant that showed commodity costs per customer are estimated to be approximately $12 a year lower because of load shifting and conservation driven by smart meter enabled time of use pricing. In 2013 alone, that represented about $53 million in savings which have not been accounted for by the Auditor General in that year or any year. What's more, an estimated 3.3% reduction in residential summer consumption was attributed to smart meter policies. The AG's report states that many of the anticipated benefits of smart meters have not been realized. However, clearly, smart meters represent an ongoing platform with new applications being added almost on a monthly basis, many already in the system. And one of the expanding uses of, March, uh, of smart meters is a wide range of already in service conservation and demand management initiatives that are enabled by smart meters. As well, smart meters are better able to detect, prevent and restore outages, give families and businesses more tools to manage their power use and further reduces greenhouse gas emissions by making it easier to connect renewable energy to the grid. The implementation of Ontario's smart meters fits in with our efforts to modernize the grid and control electricity prices. We have a responsibility to plan for the future, to ensure that our customers will be positioned to take advantage of money-saving <coughs> techniques, not just today, but in the future as well. With smart meters, we're doing just that. Ontario's Environmental Commissioner recently confirmed that smart meters are a shrewd investment. I'm now pleased to welcome Anthony Haynes, CEO of Toronto Hydro, to the podium. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Shirelli. I think it's been about a year since I've seen many of you, and uh, I hope you've uh, had an enjoyable year. Uh, my comments will be very brief. Uh, first of all, uh, Toronto Hydro, of course, is not part of the Auditor General's scope of the review, uh, but we did provide uh, certain information necessary for, for that work to be done. Uh, but I'm really here today because I asked the Minister if I could come and provide a context, one from the Toronto Hydro customer perspective and one from the Toronto Hydro, the operator of the grid perspective. And so I thank the Minister for this opportunity to add my voice to this conversation today. I will be very brief uh, with my conclusions, but my conclusions are this that the smart meter program is one of the uh, best investments that Toronto Hydro has made uh, in serving its customers over the last decade. So how can I come to that conclusion? I, say, I can say that from two points of view. 
first of all, that the smart meters and, and ultimately the time use rate program has really connected Toronto Hydro's customers uh, to its provider and really sent that signal of the choices that they make about the use of electricity uh, to the impacts on the grid. And so it's fundamentally linked us together in ways that we simply weren't linked uh, over the last 100 years. And what are the consequences of all of that? We've seen about a 3% shift off of the peak here in the city of Toronto. Now one could say 3%. Maybe we wanted 5 or maybe we wanted something else. But let me tell you what 3% looks like. 3% is 97 condominium buildings. 97 condominium buildings that came on the grid over the same period of time. We didn't have to make any additional capital investment because that shift of that 3% provided that capacity within our grid. I often get asked the question, my goodness, with all these condominiums going up, your grid must be absolutely stretched beyond belief. But in fact, the time use programs have allowed for that capacity to be there. Second uh, issue that we've had then happen is that the customers are now connected to their usage. And of course, we've had some of the most aggressive and progressive programs around uh, conservation here uh, in the province that I've seen in my entire life. And so customers have responded. But the other piece of surprise that people often don't understand is, in fact, over the last decade, Toronto Hydro's volume of, of electricity that it moves to its customers has actually gone down, which is quite a surprising feature when you look around at all the building and all the transportation uh, uses of electricity around the city that are going on today. But our consumption has, in fact, gone down. So from our customer point of view, the customers linked together. They've reacted to the time use rates, and we've seen the conservation associated with that. And of course, from the operating side, it's fundamentally just changed the way we do business. Just fundamentally changed it. And you will all recall me standing in front of you day after day uh, last winter through the ice storm. And I was able to give you a clear picture of what we knew about the grid and its operations. And so much of that uh, came from the smart meters and our capacity to really understand where we had outages. And I suppose if I gave you one small example, it would be the one where I told you about that our customers, our most vulnerable customers, in some cases customers with a medical aid equipment and other equipment in their homes needed for life support, uh, had registered that information with us. And we were able to actually ping those meters and say, do you have power? Are you okay? And when we got a, a result that said, no, that customer is out of power, we then worked with the police and social, social services to dispatch people to that doorstep. We would not have been able to know that had we not had that technology. So I come to the conclusion then, it's the smartest investment we've made for our customers. Thank you very much. Minister, just one of the uh, we're just going to have a couple of other brief uh, comments. Really uh, crunching uh, here. Um, they, we, they've abbreviated it very, very much. It sure is because the auditor yeah. looked into your program, which yeah. is a political yeah, program. Yeah. So, so I go to my question, Minister. Minister. You're implementing. Yeah, it's right? unacceptable. So we're going to answer your questions. Okay, so I just want to spend a minute to talk about the monetization story, and Anthony's already touched on a bit in terms of operational and consumer benefits. And you know, those. We appreciate you coming here today. It's not that we're all under tight deadlines. It's a political matter. If there are any we're questions, the if there are any questions that are relevant, Anthony did a very good job. And there are other similar comments and uh, uh, elements of, uh, of the system that the, the other two would have referred to. Um, okay, and Mr. so. I, I, let's, let's start the questions. Are you going to resign over this? Um, we are very, very proud of the electricity system that we put together. You spent a billion it's working. dollars more than was budgeted for this. The auditor says it's not working as effectively in saving people money. And time of use prices um, are, in essence, deterring people. And we've spent fifty billion dollars over ten years more for electricity than was the market price. So, are, are you going to resign over this? I'm going to address that right now in my answer, and I'm going to give you three or four examples of cost indications, and I'm going to deal with the global adjustment issue. Can you answer my question? Will you yes, resign? Yes. That's uh, no. I'm not going to resign. The AG's estimate of the final costs is not accurate. I'm going to give you some examples. The estimation of total costs of smart meter initiative at $2 billion is overstated. In particular, the report cites total stranded costs of $450 million in 2005. The 2005 estimate was $450 million and disregards the actual cost data of $253 million provided by the Ontario Energy Board and Hydro One. The Auditor General accepted a 2005 estimate over the actuals that have been uh, effected in the system. 
The Auditor General uh, uses an estimated cost of scrapping old meters of $400 million, while LDCs have only applied for about $280 million for that purpose. In other words, they use the estimated, old estimated cost of $400 million instead of the actuals of $280 million. The Auditor General is critical of duplicative costs of the meter data management repository. There is no duplication of the um, uh, meter data management repository. It is a system of record for processing smart meter data, and the Ontario Energy Board does not allow LDCs to recover costs for system functions that duplicate the MDR. And again, they, they've added a lot more onto that particular cost than, than the records actually show or permit. The report highlights issues that are irrelevant to a value for money audit of smart meters, in particular global adjustment and exports. With respect to global adjustment, global adjustment has nothing to do with the implementation of smart meters and is a policy as to what costs can be charged to ratepayers with or without smart meters. The global adjustment would exist whether we had smart meters or not. Indeed, there are many jurisdictions around the world that use the policy, the pricing policy of global adjustment, um, and they don't have smart meters. So they're totally irrelevant and they're not connected. Minister, Say what you want, Minister. Moderate. I don't think Minister. a single person out there thinks that their hydro bill has gone down under smart meters. Um, it has mitigated the rates very, very significantly. Um, every but, but our bills are not going down. Nobody's opening up their bi-monthly bill and saying, gee, my, my hydro bill just went down $20, even though I'm doing my laundry at midnight and That's on weekends. That's not happening in any jurisdiction in North America. In every jurisdiction, the hydro rates are continuing to go up in every single jurisdiction. And the issue is, how much are they going up by? In other words, how do you mitigate those rates? One of the significant rate mitigation measures we have is time of use. Uh, we have very, very strong conservation policies which enable uh, uh, customers of all types to mitigate the rates as well. Indeed, the conservation program, particularly in the commercial and industrial sector, is turning out to be a spectacular success. We have Home Depot, which is using almost all of our conservation programs province-wide, reducing their consumption by 35, 40 percent. We have Tim Horton, who is implementing our conservation programs uh, in new buildings that they're building and in all of the retrofits province-wide. Giant Tiger is doing the same thing. And it's a very, very significant success story. And in many cases, this is enabled by smart meters. Minister, if the, minister, if the auditor got her math wrong, how much did smart meters cost? You, I know in that long answer, you didn't actually say how much it did cost. Well, they're, they're, they're significantly less than no, she's saying. Remember, if you say 1.9 billion yeah. is not right, yeah. I need to hear what your math yeah. is. Yeah, there, there, there's some missing points in the auditor's report. Uh, as I indicated, uh, the AG is critical of the duplicative costs of the meter data management repository uh, when there's no duplication, and she didn't put she didn't put a, she didn't put a number in on that particular item. Okay, but it's it's not duplicated. I can tell you that much. Are you it's claiming that the auditor is incompetent? Yeah. Is that what you're claiming? I'm saying that uh, our senior managers, and ultimately at the end of the process, I had the opportunity to speak with the uh, with the auditor general. And uh, we, we agreed to disagree on, on a number of the issues that we put forward. Uh, and our senior managers, including the deputy minister and other managers in the system, including people from the agencies, <laughs> they reviewed these items with the representatives of the Auditor General, and they respectfully and professionally agreed to disagree on how they were being dealt with. And I'm indicating in those areas where we disagree and, and we feel that we have legitimate reason to disagree with. You're a politician, Mr. Minister. You're a politician and you have one, one point of view. Uh, the Auditor General is not a politician, has no political axe to grind, is, uh, is a servant of the legislature. Why should we believe 
you over her. Why should I even bother coming then, if that's the assumption, well, that's if that's so you're, the premise? You're, you're, you're saying well, that you're just... Premise, okay? Well, I, I believe I'm an honest politician. I'm a hardworking politician. Um, and uh, I do the best to serve my public in my community and across the province. And I believe these numbers represent uh, a proper assessment of the situation. So why are your numbers more credible than hers? You aren't well, quite, you know, why are my numbers more credible than hers? First of all, the electricity system is very complex. It's very difficult to understand. Uh, and I can tell you that some of our senior managers uh, in discussing some of these issues uh, with uh, some of the representatives of the office from the Auditor General's office uh, had the feeling that they didn't understand some of the elements of it. And they tried on a number of occasions to, uh, to, uh, uh, to talk to them about it. And at the end of the day, we decided that uh, the objective thing to do was to put our interpretation out with the public. It's not normally the thing that's done in Auditor General reports. I'll agree with that. I did three Auditor General reports in the last year, and we acknowledged the report, and we said we would work to implement uh, the changes in, in, a, in, a, in, a, uh, in an aggressive manner. In this particular case, we have not been able to do that because we wouldn't be uh, truthful to ourselves or our own professions. So should she resign? Uh, this, this, is a, this is a professional disagreement between, between uh, the, the uh, Auditor General uh, and the senior people in the Ministry of Energy and some of our agencies. So uh, we're mature, uh, responsible, professional, and uh, in that context, we can agree to disagree. Why can't you put a number on it, Minister? If, if you want us to believe that she got her numbers wrong, she puts a number to the figure, why won't you, you know, man up, and give us a number. Tell, the, tell us how much it costs. The numbers that we would, the, the, the adjustments that we would make uh, would roughly represent about $500 million. So it costs $1.4 billion. Yes. Which is still more than you. Um, well, the, again, there's another issue there in terms of what the estimates were. We had an estimate uh, in the beginning. And then before implementation, there was a subsequent estimate. And so, there, again, there was a discussion as to which estimate was, was, the, was the right estimate. So uh, the reality is uh, I would certainly like the opportunity once again to sit down with the Auditor General herself. Uh, uh, most of the discussions took place with our senior managers and her representatives. Uh, and uh, I would be more than happy to sit down and review uh, the issues on which we disagree once again. Uh, to see where the actual number ends up. And again, if we agree to disagree, then uh, again, that will be done in a very professional, respectful manner. Last question. Minister, is there something the Auditor General got right in her report when it comes to smart meters? Uh, first of all, she got right the question of gas and, and the OEB, and the OEB has acknowledged uh, the, the issues that she raised with respect to gas, and uh, she's, uh, she's very uh, actively uh, implementing uh, those, uh, those particular issues. Um, did she get right? I think, I think the actual estimates uh, in terms of the take up for time of use uh, ended up being less than, than what was estimated. But part of that was a policy decision that was made uh, when we saw the impact of that on customers and we changed somewhat the, uh, uh, the distribution. That was, a, that was a policy decision that we made uh, to make it easier uh, for families uh, during the uh, during the high peak period, so the original projections showed uh, that uh, the the peak price would be longer uh, into the evening, um, and uh, we 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 shortened that up. So that would have impacted the impact or the 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 potential savings from smart meters. Minister, would, Minister, would you like to apologize um, for the mess, or any of you gentlemen like to apologize for the mess the smart meters have been and for the hardship they've created for so many people when they open their hydro bills, they can't afford it? I mean, would any of you like to apologize uh, to, uh, you know, to ratepayers? Yeah, once again, the, the billing issues you're referring to is Hydro One, and we have the CEO of Hydro One here, but I will tell you that the, the, the billing errors came from a new IT system that was being implemented at Hydro One and was not relative to the smart meters. And I'll ask uh, Carmen to uh, respond to that. 
Yeah, we implemented a new technology platform. Um, I think I've spoken about this several times and it's a subject of a uh, review by the Ombudsman. Uh, the majority of those issues are behind us, but we have learned, we are improving. We've uh, announced the Customer Advisory Board who are advising us on how to improve customer service on an ongoing basis. I might, add that the, I might add that the CEO did apologize for that issue. Minister, when were you going to tell us that the cost of smart meters was $1.4 billion? Because we were all under the uh, belief, uh, based on what had been told to us, that that was $1 billion. That's a significant cost overrun. Even if you don't accept the $1.9, $1.4 is nothing to sneeze at. Um, we will have to sit down with the Auditor General and, and review those numbers. Uh, I'm not going to have uh, a further debate on details in public. I'm more than happy to sit down and review that with the Auditor General and uh, see if we can come to a meeting of the minds. But uh, I can tell you, as you heard from, uh, from uh, uh, the CEO from uh, Toronto Hydro, uh, the benefits to date system-wide have far exceeded our, our expectations for this stage in the process. Uh, in terms of the time of use for individual customers, um, individuals are still struggling dramatically with their hydro bills, not only here but in a lot of other jurisdictions, and we've implemented significant mitigation measures. In fact, our current budget uh, has a provision for a low-income program, which will take $170 off low- and medium-income uh, families, and we're taking the, uh, the debt retirement charge off two years earlier. Now, the clean energy benefit is coming off, but the net benefit uh, on that will be roughly about $150 for medium-low-income families. Thank okay, you very thank much, you everyone. So much.